Sarah, Prince William seemed to be stepping up whilst his father receives treatment. We saw an example of it there last night. Lots of attention on him. How did he do? Yeah, and it's the first time we've seen him for about three weeks, actually, since he stepped back from public duties after Kate was taken into hospital and had abdominal surgery. So yesterday was the first time we'd seen him out in public and he addressed and acknowledged what had been going on in the royal family in recent weeks. And he thanked the public, as you heard there, for their kind wishes about the king and about his wife, uh, Catherine. And he also cracked a joke about Tom Cruise uh, being there and suggested he didn't take off the new helicopters uh, for a spin. It was a London Air Ambulance fundraising gala. Prince William's been patron of that charity since 2020, having been an air ambulance pilot in East Anglia himself. So I think it was good to see him, big smile on his face, uh, looking like he was having uh, a good time and, and also referring to the medical focus, as he described it, of recent weeks with a, a, a gag about, you know, deciding to escape it by coming to an air ambulance function. <laughs> it, part of this is that he's going to take on a lot more responsibility, mm. perhaps more than he'd wanted to at this point. Yes, and I think that's the difficult thing about this. Um, there's never a good time for anything like this to happen, is there? But it is particularly challenging Two for the health crises family. at the same time. Two health yeah. crises at the same time, with uh, Catherine going to be off duty until Easter. Uh, and now William, who had wanted to take a bit of a back seat, with his father's blessing, actually, to give his wife support and look after their three young children, now having to step up and be the kind of focal point for the royal family now as the king steps back. Do you know what? It felt like a bit of stability, didn't it? I think that's why that was really important, yeah. actually, Nick. It's a very good point. It was really important and very much choreographed that we saw him out in public yesterday. And a lot of... Lo I mean, it was jovial, wasn't it? I didn't know necessarily that him and Tom Cruise had such a close relationship. And, and it is a great photo on the front page of The Sun <laughs> as well, I mean, isn't the it? wingmen. Yeah. 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 Well, Tom Cruise said, you can be my wingman anytime. anytime. They've met on a couple of occasions um, at the Top Gun Maverick premiere. Uh, William and Kate attended that with... Uh, Tom Cruise and William then even wore some Top Gun slippers that got a lot of attention. He mentioned he wasn't wearing those last night. Tom Cruise is a big fan of the royal family. He was here and made a surprise appearance at the Platinum Jubilee at the pageant uh, at Windsor, a big fan of the late Queen uh, and clearly uh, supporting that charity that's very important to Prince William last night. One son getting a lot of positive press, another less so. Prince Harry on his way back home. It, it really was a flying visit. Yeah, although I don't know that the press has been entirely negative about Prince Harry, because I think the, the feeling is that he did absolutely the right thing as a son. Having received the news about his father's diagnosis, he flew straight over to visit his father. What has raised eyebrows is the length of that visit and the amount of face time he got with his father between 30 and 45 minutes uh, with his dad. And what did that say about the state of relations? I think, by all accounts, the King was very pleased to see his son, delayed his departure to Sandringham in order to be there at Clarence House when Harry arrived, but a rather different picture when it comes to Harry and William at no time for a meeting between those two brothers. Isn't it? It's, it's very odd life and a very odd contrast, the way that Harry flies in, has his 30 minutes, flies back, job done, and then... Prince William is obviously front and centre as, yeah, as the heir to the throne, I guess he would be, but that contrast is made more stark. I wonder whether, whether the long-term effect of this will be a gradual move towards rapprochement, because if you're saying the general feeling is that Harry did the right thing, and certainly the King was appreciative of it, who knows what happens next time? Yeah, and I, I think it, it, what happens over the coming days and weeks will be really significant. Whether that meeting between Harry and the King means greater communication by telephone, FaceTime, for example, uh, from between California and Sandringham. That would be a, a step in the right direction. It's also about whether there are any leaks of those conversations, because the royal family are really concerned that private conversations that they have had have ended up in the public domain, whether that's in an interview or whether that's in a book or whether that's in a documentary series. If that remains private, the conversation between Harry and his father, then that's certainly a first step on rebuilding that trust and enabling further conversations For to sure. happen. Talking about conversations that are taking place, we saw uh, the late Queen Elizabeth on Zoom, um, yes. but the King, it looks like, when he has his audiences with the Prime Minister, that's going to be done uh, on the landline. Yes, he's quite old school. Very old <laughs> school. King Charles. <laughs> Not Zoom for him. No, he doesn't even own a mobile phone. Right. Um, which is one factor which makes communication with his son Harry a little bit difficult. More 
because you have to come through the switchboard. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, so uh, the King has gone to Sandringham in Norfolk. He's not in London now, and we're going to see that as a regular pattern. He'll return to London for his treatment, and then his recuperation will take place in Sandringham surrounded by the countryside, which I think is where he's at his happiest. And so that weekly audience with the Prime Minister, which took place yesterday, we were told took place by telephone. I mean, reasons of geography as well. But we did, as you say, saw the late Queen embracing uh, video uh, calls during uh, the pandemic. We might have expected that to happen. I don't know why or whether uh, the King just feels more comfortable with a good old fashioned telephone. Okay.